It's part of what I think about in any project when I see a planning application come through. It's part of things we should be doing, part of the tools of trade. So it depends on the scale of the site so, and what we might actually find. So you sort of make a judgment call on that. So you're probably looking to see down down, at least at the moment. So some of the bigger sites in town, we've got a big archaeological site, going to find some medieval remains or post-medieval remains. So we're going to see something potentially, but we hope to. So at that point, you think, well, community engagement is a goer because you're going to do excavation needs, sorry, build recording, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll be almost worth it. You'll see a product at the end of it, a clear product. And you can think, well, I can see, you know, people are going to see it visually. There could be an impact in the community or something. You know, like, so it's something you can actually see it being reasonable to do. Whereas, if it's a small scale, like a high, small housing extension, you could be in and out in a day. It's not that you might not find something, or that case might not find. It's more when you see it, it's, they're going to be there for five seconds and walk off. That's not to say we shouldn't do it, because you might actually find something, but it's how we actually do the community engagement. Community engagement doesn't have to be that complex as well, maybe it's, it's a big fear. But on the bigger sites, you sort of really look at mitigation that could be like open days, you know, a whole range rather than just maybe a bit of social media at the end of it. Takes and trades. I think it's just having an idea of corporate, it's communication. That's what community engagement is. And I think you need to be aware of actually what would you like, to, if you're a visitor, what would you like to know? What story do you want to tell? And I think that it's not a tricks, it's actually just being, you want to tell that story and actually communicating with your, with a local authority, say archaeologists, obviously I say that, but also the developers in the community, you do it. So it's actually saying, well, we want to tell a story. Don't be afraid, it's not a big thing, or it doesn't have to be a big thing, it could be small scale, but obviously it's getting the right people to the right job. Not everybody can do it, I think it's one of the tricks. So don't, you might get people uncomfortable doing it. Well, don't force them to do it. But other people are engaged in it. What I find is more people with social media these days are always on social media. Use those skill sets. It's no different. Mental. I think there's a real perception that, oh my God, it's really hard to do. Well, it is, it's not necessarily easy, but it's, it should be said. It's not necessarily that hard to do some kind of community engagement. If you write a report, it's community engagement in one respect. I think there's a perception of fear in the client if you're talking to the developer that they don't want to do it. Well, the developers do it already. They have to do it with major development sites. Um, this whole idea of communication and planning, they do uh, you know, engagement at an early stage. They want to do it, they want to do it or proceed to do it. I think this idea or it's going to stop developing. If you engage in it, if you have a clear idea of what you're going to do, and if you're going to have open days, you're going to find something. So I think it's a mental reticence. I think there's a, a hold back from the noughties where we're going in digging it, but forgotten actually why we're actually doing it. And then you get people like ourselves, local authorities, well, archaeology, well, actually, archaeology is about engagement. Either you're writing a report, and publishing results, which is academic, but actually what we're actually doing is archaeology is for the public good. That's why we do conditions. So therefore, community engagement at some level, even as doing a talk or something, is fulfilling that brief of of, the, of that community community benefit. That's you know that's what we're doing the job for. And I think as a profession, we think <clears throat> it's a luxury add-on, but it's actually core to what we actually do, and it's actually. You don't have to be all singing and dancing and have the best thing. It's not have to be up for award, it's just about doing your job. And I think that's what people's attention between us and local authorities probably say, well, we want that because we have to you know, do that as part of our job. That's a core reason. But commercial archaeology is just the flip side of the same coin. And it's more of a mental barrier. But also, I think people are scared a bit about doing it. Some people aren't big, I'm not saying I'm big at it, but some people just aren't, don't want to do it. You can't force somebody to do it, but some people can do it, and they've got probably big, you know, skills just chatting to people. That's community engagement. But they get specialised, obviously, you know, to to be on a special skill and the and the the whole um, 
infrastructure go with it. And it's a different skill set. And you need people who are really good at it to do it, like you, you'd have another specialist. Yeah, um, I've had a couple from, obviously, I'm just where we're sitting now, what's it, April 2022, we're just coming to the end of one the Ember Tram project, well, not coming to the end, coming end largely to the excavation stage. And from the outset, that's a major, we're project managing it and path the cancer council our project. So the whole brief of the tram project was community engagement. We could not do it because it's, as I can say, it's a, I would say more important than HS2, but I'm biased, but I would say like that, it's a major infrastructure project ripping right the way through the heart of, of Edinburgh. So we're, we're right, in the, right in the centre of three of, of, of Edinburgh's communities. Leith have got a very historical uh, past and, and the community there. So we embedded it in it, you know, from the whole project is, as well as, it's got a community engagement project, all levels, you know, from, um, and archaeology is part of it. So, but it's changed through that. We also did it through the pandemic as well. So we had ideas at the start of open days. So one of the main things from it, was we knew we were going to dig up a, a graveyard and um, so the archaeology would be open of Christ the way through it and, and we did it in, with, with Headland uh, on the first tram uh, project um, and it was a big success. So basically I insisted that people could see the excavation human remains, they weren't hiding behind hoarding or you know, like second guessing. So we hope to do a lot more of that, you know, open days uh, things. Then the pandemic came along, actually technically came out a good time in the project because it stopped us making them think because it was just about starting the excavation. So instead of doing public open days, we kept it still open. So we had the we engaged with our staff. We say, well, you know, people do you work with people ask questions, engage with them. If you don't, if you don't want to do it, somebody else, one of your colleagues could do it, or you know, we would do it. We had you know, dynamo Saturdays engaging with the public. It was really worthwhile. But we did the whole thing about vlogs, and that's the first time I'd used them and suddenly and it was it was, oh God, it was a bit scary. And I was getting interviewed every sort of Friday. We did it on a weekly process, less than so now. But it was really engaging because it was really worthwhile. I got the message out. We showed the public that we're doing it, doing the care. And after the official uh, reticence, it was actually quite an easy process, good fun. The, so we interviewed people who were digging, the, the guard team and guard were really engaged, but they enjoyed it, did their own sort of stuff. And obviously that led off into Digging for Britain and other things. So that was really good. And um, also through that, we did some more community. So we had to change it sort of organically through it. But we found a time capsule. So we engaged with school to put a new time capsule on the rubber burn statue. So we had things like that going through it. Quite a traditional one. We had some posters up, which probably were good. But like one of the thoughts, I mean, people posters you don't know, change all the time. And, but we did the vlog. So we had an updating that one. So that was probably a lesson learned. But it sort of gets back to more social media because everybody was using that. And I think one's a smaller type of project was one that Headland did in Jeffrey Streets, where I think we were only on site for a couple of weeks to find some medieval walls. But that was really good because although we couldn't have open days again, it was well, just last year in November, engaging with yourselves. So we were actually just with our social media posts on Twitter, I think it was on Twitter, Instagram, and, or on LinkedIn, which got the message out. So it's another, it, but that shows you don't have to have big sites. Or be there for a week and just do that engagement process, keeping people, people informed. And then, you know, in social with local authorities, if we did find something, we could do a big media process. So I think that's some of the really good ones.